scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Visit my family. Let this be an encounter service to the glory and the praise of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. While standing, let me just request that for there are baskets here in front. How many of us are yet to submit our prayer request? Just wave your hands. Okay, so I'll, um, we'll just take a minute or two if you can. Just quickly write your prayer request. That includes that of your loved ones. That includes that of anyone you're trusting God for. Please believe. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, For without faith it is impossible to please him. The Bible says, For he that cometh to God must come believing that he is, he exists, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, let me request, if you need a paper, I see the ushers passing papers, you may wave your hands and someone would be there to reach you. Please, ushers, let's help to just get it across. It says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Do not forget that this is a prayer conference, and we have a God that answers prayers. Hallelujah. We're going to pray in the Spirit for 10 minutes. So I'll give us a minute or two to write our request so that we're focused. Please write everything you are tired of that must live your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. Write every negative report that must live your life because God is here to visit you. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. Are you done writing? That means there are many things that must live your life. In the name of Jesus, write all of them by faith. They must go by the power of the Holy Spirit. While that is happening, we're going to begin praying in the Spirit everywhere, inside here and those following online. We're praying. This is a prayer conference and I want to request that we take 10 minutes at least to just pray in the Spirit, to prepare our spirit man for the mighty things that God is going to be doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you visit us. Go ahead and begin to pray. You can pray while you're writing. Whether you are standing or sitting, the most important thing is that you are praying. Shaleka braska de balako sabra de barisusia. Krata bagata brasa beleketo shafras kebeleketo. 
Elando shala graska veneke dos. Lega prata savara dosha preske nevabis. Prata bagata frante pereto sante preke de vele dos. But ye building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Shada bagata praska de velega sofrandos ke ne vele dos. Rande zemene ke to shala graska veneke de skoparando sabris. Elasha praska pareto shavrende pareto skabriata. Imbrakata barako shavraska pareto sebrege de veleke dos. Someone still praying. Rata bakata preska te frente ke bereko siata la fraska bereto shavra se berika kapriata they go from strength to strength everyone that appear before the lord in zion someone is praying kaparanto jalakos ka fraska bereto sabriata ka leka te frente ke barato safraska de beleka de ko shalakata balaka tos he does shani gata barata safras kete bele kete kata balata bos. Rata pakata prende ke berreto skoto pras ke bele kete balatos. He la baraba na kata prende ke balas. Rakata barato se prende ke berreto ska pres kata balakos. Rapa kaparanto zozo pe kete bele kete prata kata parude se kete balatos. Somebody pray. He barato shala gata fras kete barunda sebregede. Shakata bakata barakata fras kete belende kete brose legede belegeda. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and defieth himself, and defieth himself. At defiance himself. Apa la kosha krakosa ta prate ke belego to sofrati ke beletos. Shari bete beletos sofrati ke de beletos yana. Kala branda barato sakos ke de beletos sofrati beletos yata bas. Alanda prante ke beretus ka de krete berekus yata. The Bible says the Spirit searches all things, yea the deep things of God, yea the deep things of God, yea the deep things of God. Abo shale ka boga sa safras ka de berekus shale krete berekus yata. Rapa kata prante ke bereto safras ke de belega da sigetesh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We're still. Um, when you're done writing your request, you don't need to come out yourself. There will be ushers there. You may just pass it to the person at the aisle, and then they will give it to the usher so that it doesn't become rowdy. So once you're done writing your request, um, just pass it to the person by your left or right to the aisle and please ushers do well to just reach out so that um, we can collate everything together and bring it in front here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we take a minute or two to still pray? You are declaring whilst you are praying in the spirit what you are saying is lord i open up my capacity to receive everything that you have for me even today go ahead and pray declare that there is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles declare it even by the spirit the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith the working of miracles the hearing of faith 
I walk out of this place with an encounter. I walk out of this place with a testimony. I walk out of this place with an encounter. I walk out of this place with a testimony. I walk out of this place with an encounter. I walk out of this place with a testimony. I walk out of this place with an encounter and with a testimony to the glory of the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do us good today, O oh God. Breathe upon us by your spirit in the name of Jesus. And let the God of wonders visit us today. We vow to give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. God bless you. Please be seated. God's method has always been and will always be his word. God's method has always been and will always be his word. God's method for lifting is his word. God's method for restoration is his word. God's method for signs and wonders is his word. Hallelujah. God's method for the opening of doors is his word. The Bible says he sent forth his word. And his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Hallelujah. Let me do a quick recap yesterday of, of yesterday's teaching. I think it's very important. We taught yesterday on the wonder walking God and do well to go online, get the teachings, listen to it again. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing that brings understanding and even by the word of God. And I did tell us yesterday three very important points. Let me recap for emphasis. Number one, we agreed and established yesterday that God is the all powerful God. Do not forget this. We took our time to shake away unbelief by exploring the credentials of God as captured in scripture. Hallelujah. He said that the Bible is a compendium of the walkings, the mighty walking power of God. From the Red Sea to the dethroning of arrogant kings, supernatural manifestations, and then Jesus, the incarnate one who came representing the Father, all of the mighty things that he did nature miracles healing the sick all of these were and remain attestations to the fact that god is the all-powerful god he says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that power belonged to god are we in agreement number two we did say that as powerful as god is he desires that his power and his glory be revealed in the lives of his people so god is not just all powerful he's not just almighty but that there is a yearning there is a desire to see his power and his glory revealed in the lives of his people this is very important the bible says in zephaniah three seventeen, we agreed yesterday the lord in the midst of his people is mighty hallelujah psalm 107 and verse 21 says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men to the children of men so god desires his power to be made manifest in my life and your life and that includes your business your job your family your health and everything that concerns you then number three was the point of action yesterday that God's wonder working power is only made manifest when we call upon him so that God's power operates based on a response system there has to be a call as an indication of humility and need from the earth hallelujah 
jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 call unto me and i will answer you i will show you great and mighty things the bible says which thou knowest not that god's wonder working power is made manifest when we call upon him scripture says in psalm 145 verse 18 that the lord is nigh them that call upon him not just those that need him not just those that are in trouble them that call upon him at midnight paul and silas bound hand and feet are we together locked up in prison the bible says they prayed and they sang and the prisoners heard them they called upon god and he came in majestic power shook the foundations of the prison and the bible records that all doors open i like that rendition all doors not some all doors financial doors health doors all doors open hallelujah and we wrapped up yesterday by saying that there are two dimensions to calling god number one we call god through heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer not careless prayer not prayer that comes while you are distracted prayer that your heart your all is committed to the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much not the careless and unintentional prayer of the believer it has to be fervent it has to be effectual your heart has to be in it hallelujah and then we said that the second way we call upon god is through the mystery and the power of perfected praise praise that is from the heart and i did tell us that the high point in praising god is not dancing the high point in praising god is not singing the high point in praising god is not chanting or recitation not even crying the high point is when we acknowledge him remember yes that if you're dancing you're singing and whatever else you do does not translate to acknowledging his good works you are not praising him proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 trust in the lord with all your heart the bible says and lean not to thine own understanding it says next verse in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the lord and turn away from evil so we call upon the lord in prayer and in praise and i did observe yesterday that most believers know how to pray but few people know how to praise with understanding nigerians know how to dance we know how to shout and that is wonderful but it's amazing that in all of this sometimes it ends up as religiosity and even becomes sin because you find out that it just delves to the marketing of flesh with no spiritual substance in it while it is wonderful to use every scriptural mechanism to praise god the real praise comes from the heart lord i acknowledge you for all that you have done you are the reason why i'm alive are we together the psalmist will write he says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul then he says and forget not his benefits he does not stop there he starts listing the benefits who forgives your iniquities your sins are we together who healed thee from your diseases this delivers you from your destruction and so on and so forth that's what it means to acknowledge him this in this session very quickly i want to give us a charge as we pray and trust god to release mighty testimonies upon our lives i want to talk very briefly on the power of god the power of god the power of god first chronicles chapter 29 please and verse 11 when we see it when we have it projected i'll request that we read together first chronicles 29 and verse 11 our discussion is on the power of god we want to explore a bit to understand what exactly is the power of god when the bible talks about the almightiness and the power of god um, we need to stretch ourselves a bit to see the various dimensions and and what essentially what the power of god is about so let's read this projected ready one to read thine O lord is the greatness uh-huh and the power and the glory 
and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above very powerful scripture not above some but above all please be seated God bless you and thank you every time you watch a man of God or you watch any kind of supernatural occurrence happen usually we credit unusual manifestations to the presence of power it seems as though our world has a very inherent ability to recognize power whether it is demonic whether it is from God the most important thing is we know subconsciously that power is responsible for unusual outcomes am I right on that say for instance you do not necessarily say I am powerful for walking on this stage because it's very human and very natural to walk the bones were built to be able to carry my weight but once I begin to float and fly now that becomes another dimension the next the next discussion becomes to verify the source of the power not the absence of power am I right on that so we know that every time power is present the the striking feature of the presence of power is an unusual manifestation that many times defies the natural course of nature am I right on that yes for instance it is usual for someone to build wealth gradually by the spirit of god through the dignity of kingdom integrity and from an economic standpoint you can predict that under normal circumstances maybe in five to ten years a little above that you know you can be sure that something like that will happen but if in one year or even one month that individual accumulates the results of ten years now we have to vet carefully as to the source of power but we cannot deny that was there was an outsourced ability that produced that outcome am i right on that yes if i told you that i were going back to abuja and then you didn't find me in the airport you didn't find me in any vehicle and suddenly i call you and say i'm there <laughs> hallelujah yes i know science is still exploring telepathy and all of that but um you would have to say okay this is it's either this is philip's strategy are we together or some kind of demonic thing but i'm just trying to say that everybody who has been on earth for a while is familiar with the whole idea of power we may not um, understand the concept in terms of its definition but we cannot hide the effect of it we know that everywhere power is available there must be unusual manifestations unusual occurrences that means we have come to agree subconsciously that power is related to unusual manifestations everywhere there is power there will always be unusual manifestations power seems to sustain the ability to break the normal occurrence of things to interrupt status quo hallelujah do you believe that i'm saying that because that is what will begin to happen to you from today in the name of jesus christ that there will be unusual accelerations supernatural possibilities in your life and I am telling you up front so that when men ask you by what means did you achieve this you will simply tell them the great power of God this is what the power of God is able to do hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so we know that every unusual manifestation on earth is credited to power when Jesus walked upon the earth he did not start his ministry even though he was the word incarnate even though from age 12 the Bible records that he was in the temple learning under the doctors of the law you would think with the abundance of the revelation that he had already from learning the law he was fit enough to start ministry Jesus himself had to delay his manifestation until he went to John the Bible says at age 30 he was found at the Jordan with John while he was baptizing and John looks at Jesus and says behold the lamb 
that taketh away the sins of the world hallelujah and john declined initially to baptize jesus he said i am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus tells him suffer it to be so that all scripture be fulfilled and john dips jesus in water and your bible says when he came out of the waters the heavens open am i right on that and it says the holy ghost came upon him in the similitude of a dove and there was a statement from heaven he says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased then the bible says the holy spirit drove jesus into the wilderness and there he prayed and he fasted being tempted of the devil he overcame satan by what was written and then the bible records your bible records that he returned in the power of the spirit that was the commencement of his ministry not just with illumination and knowledge as powerful as knowledge is knowledge without a divine engracing will only turn you into a historian with no ability to defend your propositions this is what we lack largely in the body of christ i do not believe they are, we are in ignorance the challenge is that we say so many things that we have not obtained the grace or the empowerment to prove for instance we say that god is a lifter for instance we say god restores and we shout amen truthfully so except that that statement remains barren until the power to make it happen have comes are we together yes and the world that we live in today is the world that is obsessed with evidence that when you say god does this he can do this he can do that they honestly will not pay attention to you in fact here's what jesus said jesus himself saw a fig tree right a fig tree that was green looking very attractive and he himself was deceived by that fig tree he got there and not finding any fruit he caused the fig tree that means you should not attract people that much without nothing to give i'm saying that because in the name of jesus nobody will ask you from today where is your god yeah. nobody will ask you for how long will you keep saying without us seeing in the name of jesus christ the kingdom was built to advance on the strength of the speakings of god and the performance of his power do not forget the speakings of god and the performance of his power one more time the speakings of god and the performance of his power that means everything god says he wants to do he does not just say he wants to do are we together so your life must subscribe to that template where for everything you say there is the grace component to be able to defend it so when you tell someone for instance that my god is able to open a door for you they say i believe it there needs to be a corresponding performance hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there is a desperate need for power now in in the church especially the pentecostal charismatic circles we are not unfamiliar with the manifestations of power at least we've seen many things that relate to power healing falling under the anointing and so on and so forth but for the average believer i think subliminally we have come to believe that power is the exclusive preserve of men of god pastors apostles prophets so once you are not called into the fivefold ministry generally your heart does not yearn for power maybe you would yearn for wisdom maybe you would yearn for favor but once we mention power we generally say i don't need it i'm not doing anything on the pulpit but notice your jesus the very church that we are part of now was founded upon the ministry of power jesus told the disciples he says tarry ye in jerusalem after three years of intense mentorship he said you are still not qualified to go and start you would not be the true church until you are endued with power so he says tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power and on the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come the bible says they were with one accord in one place verse 2 says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it came and filled the house 
and filled all day that were sitting and then the bible says there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon how many each of them 120 it sat upon every one of them it sat upon every one of them and they were all filled i like the word all filled not some filled they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now when you back down to acts chapter 1 from verse 7 and 8 they met jesus and said will you at this point restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the father has put within his care he says but ye shall receive power verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you he never said you will receive an information he never said you will receive encouragement he never said you will receive the basis for controversy he said you shall receive power you shall receive power notice he never said i will give you power he said you shall receive meaning it is within your power to reject it if i say you shall receive something you can choose as an act of your volition to reject it and sadly many have rejected the power of the holy spirit because we only give it a pentecostal outlook for want of word we just feel that I'm, I'm not interested in getting people to fall down. I'm not interested in prophesying. I'm just a great businessman that God has called. I'm a kingdom financier. Leave the power to the apostles and prophets and pastors. But that is not scriptural. It takes power. Please listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life and my life. It takes more than good intention. There are many reasons the Bible tells us to, to contend for power. One of it is that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, it says, ye are of God. And the whole world, the whole world includes your village, includes Nigeria, includes America, includes anywhere at all. It lies in wickedness. So Psalm 66 and verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you through the greatness of your power through the greatness of your power number two the purposes of god can never be achieved in the strength of the flesh it is important that we come to terms with this you cannot produce god's dimension of results in the strength of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh is that true the arm of flesh is limited nobody is able to do much with the arm of the flesh hence the need for power so the angel comes to a young virgin espoused to joseph called mary and then he brings a very strange salutation and he told her that she was going to be with child without the cooperation of a natural man and mary said well i believe god but how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and here was gabriel's reply he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you mary was not a preacher mary was not a missionary mary was not a woman of god like deborah or some of these warriors she was just a young virgin who was espoused to a carpenter and yet she required that much power the power of the highest will overshadow you that is the basis of the possibilities that will happen in your life the same thing happened to elizabeth Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, for a long time she had been without a child and Gabriel appears to Zechariah, bringing him glad tidings that his wife would have a child. And the Bible even says this about John the prophet that you call the Baptist, that John was filled with the spirit right from his mother's womb. The nature of his assignment mandated that he was born with power. Are we together? Very important. The ministry of power cannot be downplayed especially in our world today believers have a lot of knowledge but the power component has largely been missing and i'm suggesting that the primary reason why i think and believe that people have rejected power because in truth they do not know what power is the idea of power that we have in church is just falling down and standing up and people rising from wheelchairs and that is wonderful 
but that is a, a very minute fraction of the vast possibilities that comes when you have power so my assignment is to charge us very briefly what exactly is the power of god what exactly is the power of god when we say i have the power of god or i want the power of god what am i saying we say it we sing it we cry it we roll on the ground desiring power and we say lord send your power what exactly are you asking for more love more power more of you in my life we sing these songs all the time more love that is understandable more power So if I random pick people from this wonderful congregation and I say, please come and stand beside me and describe for us what exactly you have been praying for. Because you see, it's difficult. The mind, from a psychological standpoint, the mind thinks in pictures. The reason why we're not able to understand a lot of spiritual concepts is because it takes the Holy Ghost to help you. The way we understand from elementary knowledge, when you begin to teach children from elementary school, they tie objects to words am i right on that so when you say orange you draw an orange when you say mango you draw a mango so if i tell you a ball your mind knows what to relate with but if i say power what exactly do you think of the closest thing that comes to your mind is fire am i right or the sun or anything that carries a semblance of force and invincibility but what exactly is the power of god so that you will know what is going to come upon you so that you will walk in that consciousness i have the power of god and then what does it do to what end do i desire and need this power power that was so important jesus did not ignore it the early church did not ignore it tarry until ye be endued with power is god speaking to someone already thank you jesus so what exactly is the power of god what is the power of god i'll give you four descriptions or definitions as a charge sadly we're not looking extensively into the subject of power so i'll just give us four descriptions to help guide our understanding as we release our faith to receive are you ready number one what is the power of god the power of god is his agency for creation the power of god is the tool the agency that he uses for creation that every time god wants to create create naturally to create in a life the agency that he deploys for that creation is called his power we considered it yesterday jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 our lord god remember thou has made the heavens and the earth help me by thy great power so every time god wants to make every time god wants to create that means a new body part when god wants to make anything new my goodness it is his power that means every time the power of god arrives in a location do not wonder why things can be created don't be surprised that someone can come with a missing body part and in a moment creation happens because the power of god is the agency that is responsible for creation hallelujah do you believe that our lord god the prophet says thou has made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy outstretched arm in second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 second peter 1 and verse 3 apostle peter is giving us a very profound perspective second peter 1 let's look at verse 3 for sake of time 3 it says according as his divine power 
hath given unto us how many things all things god's power is a giver it can provide possibilities to your life according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness that means whatever is missing in your life that you cannot find it is within the jurisdiction of god's power to make for manifestation and to make for creation you believe that shout amen yeah. mm. who seen that this man was born blind who sinned was it him or his father jesus replies neither but that the glory of the lord be revealed and the power of god was released and that man was healed do you not see the wonder walking power of god all through scriptures every time there was need for supernatural manifestation it came by the power of God that means if you are bankrupt of the power of God in your life there are many divine possibilities as captured and revealed in scripture that may never find expression in your life never find expression in your life it takes power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation I don't need to be afraid of what is not yet in my life now because the power of God is able to transport realities from the unseen realm and compel them to be made manifest in my life do you believe that the Bible says the word became flesh the word became means it was translated from a dimension and brought here what you call creation is only creation in this realm from a, a spiritual standpoint is simply transportation of realities from a realm and a dimension are we together now and to make it manifest here this is powerful ah everything that is missing in my life i don't need to fear the power of god is able to create it what does it mean to create to take raw materials from the realm of the spirit and literally materialize it to be made manifest here and now and you see it's a mystery because our finite minds and thinking cannot stretch that far so the bible simply says just like you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child nor the way of the wind it says that's how you do not know the work of god when it has to do with manifesting the power of god to create possibilities in your life there will be gaps in your understanding there is a limit to which you can understand but it's just for you to believe that god is able to make happen today something in your life that is not there in the name of jesus christ when abraham was about to kill isaac as an act of his obedience unto god the bible records that when he told him he said stop for now i know that you fear me and i swear that in blessing i will bless you in multiplying i will multiply you and so on and so forth he said now you turn and you will see a a lamb a ram that had been caught together where did that suddenly come from i hope you know how high he had to climb to go and kill isaac that is what the power of god can do so do not be surprised that you will go back home and see an email you did not remember applying for you see if you do not know listen if you do not know what the power of god can do you will credit everything to the devil oh i believe this i believe this I believe this in the name of Jesus that what was not there and what needs to be made manifest many of you have seen things in your dreams God has shown you things for how long will they remain in the realm of the spirit there is a power component that must bring it down you've seen the job there you've seen the lifting there you've seen the child there you've seen the increase there but it takes power to transport it believe what I'm telling you from the unseen realm to be made manifest the assignment of power is that it stops that reality from just being a dream and being a vision the word became flesh and it was made manifest and we beheld we beheld we beheld hallelujah power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation and so they tell you your kidneys are failing or they tell now watch this watch this let me tell you how the devil has played with the minds of believers please look at me and i mean no offense i just want you to learn something watch my hand as normal as my hands are if my hand suddenly begins to swell 
swell and become so big nobody will ask where the extra flesh came from that is supposed to be a wonder itself what part of my body was reduced to have added this my weight i'm losing weight yet that very part of the hand is growing and that does not look like a miracle for many people a wonder but if it shrinks back we now say where did it go to you see what happens to our mind are you understanding my thinking now that someone you are losing weight it's not like a part of your body reduced something began to grow in a rate that your body does not use it should not grow at that rate within two three months there is a mighty growth nobody will ask where did it come from there has to be a power that is not natural that sponsored that growth because your body does not grow at that rate so you can see that the growth rate of that demonic thing, whatever it is is inconsistent with god's programming on how your body should naturally grow that already tell you tells you that there is an ability that is not normal that is sponsoring that growth do you believe this so why then should you doubt where at the instance of prayer somebody will look and say i do not find it and you say oh, are you sure <laughs> are you sure are you sure are you sure creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do jesus just listen to what you are saying sing that part again creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do jesus beautiful song creator what can't you do if the devil can cause something you were not born with to just appear in your body sometimes without a medical explanation can the creator of your life come back in response and take away that thing from your body is it not in your bible that every tree that my father ah, do we not study our bibles every tree this is not a prophet talking every tree that has not been planted by my father that god himself can uproot and in the name of jesus he is uprooting everything that our father did not plant uprooting everything that our father did not plant hallelujah please sit down sometimes people ask me and say apostle how do miracles happen how how can someone just be sitting on a wheelchair and in a moment the person stands up and starts walking what happened to the bones my question is how does a healthy person suddenly become bound reverse the process in your mind how does somebody whose bones are alive an adult all of a sudden wakes up one morning and the hand refuses to function don't doesn't that tell you that a stranger that while men slept jesus tried to explain someone came and planted something i'm saying it again any stranger that came to the soil of your life to plant anything that was not of god my god will uproot it 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 in the name of jesus christ please sit down the power of god his agency for creation his agency for manifestation his agency for creation his agency for manifestation hmm. number two let's hurry up blessed be the name of the lord what is the power of god are you ready now his agency for correction the power of God is his agency for correction that means when there is anything that should not be the factor that is released to correct that anomaly is called the power of God please just listen carefully his agency for correction Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 
matthew chapter 8 please watch this the bible says and when he was come down from the mountain the he being jesus great multitudes followed him verse 2 the bible says and behold there came a leper and worshiped him and the leper said unto him if thou will thou canst make me clean and jesus says to him he put forth his hand and touched him and said i will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed do you know what it means to correct to correct means to take away the default and to take away the constraining factor so that you restore whatever it is to its original state so to understand correction you need to look at a pencil and a cleaner please look up assuming i'm writing one to ten and i write one two three four and five should be the sequence and for whatever reason i made a mistake and i wrote seven are we together i have destroyed that progression am i right on that the assignment of the cleaner is to wipe away that so that i can now make so that when you are reading it you will never know that anything went wrong like that let me prophesy to someone everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen someone say correction for instance please sit down for instance that you came from a family where it's been purported that nobody rises because of some demonic fraternities and covenants that were entered that you were not there now you were not there your opinion was not sought are we together but now that you are there the power of God can reach down and begin to correct things. Correct things. Take away the constraining factor. Hmm. Luke chapter 13 from verse 10. Luke chapter 13. His agency for correction. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath 11. And behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity how long 18 years i told you time does not change anything time only reveals it takes an encounter with power for anything to change a number of us here are science-based and when you study the works of sir isaac newton even his works on mechanics he, there there are certain laws that were put there for instance his, his first law of mechanics says that a body will remain in a state of rest, are we together, or uniform motion except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. In other words, if, if you leave this here, it will remain here forever until something greater than the force keeping it pushes it. Am I right on that? So if your destiny is this object, it will remain here, provided the cause, provided the satanic intrusion seems to be gaining over you. But when a power greater than what is keeping you arrives, ah! Allah is turning things around. Allah that's, that's someone's testimony right now. Allah Can you sing it one more time? That's what is happening to you right now. In the name of Jesus correction who's seen that this man was born blind why is it that nobody rises in this family and the anointing comes and says it no longer matters a force greater than what is keeping you has arrived a force greater than the curse a force greater than the witchcraft 
a force greater than every limitation has arrived hallelujah sometimes when i can squeeze a little time i just sit in the living room and i'm watching nat joe wild the national geographic channel and sometimes i watch with shock and wonder as animals act out the truth of scripture so i find out that one animal can suffer go through the the rigor and the labor of patiently waiting say for antelopes or some animals in their groups and then when it traps one the lion or the hyena or any animal that is more powerful than that it would turn the animal that cuts that one to a, a prey now and just comes to bully it away and i said this is it for as long as the greater does not come satan looks powerful for as long as the greater does not come delay looks powerful curses look powerful the cancer looks powerful i hope you know that they all have names a name is essentially a means of identification and i hope you know that every time you give something a name you have also created a basis to personify it you call it hiv you call it cancer you call it retrogression you can give it all kinds of names including sympathetic ones like rise and fall whatever you call it the most important thing is once you have identified it you have given it a, a, a sense you have personified it and you have put it in a position where the name of jesus christ that all the power that i'm talking about has been invested in that name now you will understand what jesus meant when he said all power all authority exousia in heaven and on earth has been given to me he says go therefore that means no matter what you meet be aware that what is in you is greater than what is around hallelujah apostle you are talking like this because you don't know the kind of background that i'm coming from do you know the one i'm coming from we all came from somewhere once you are in africa there is somewhere it's not look when you are lamenting about your background don't cry to an african because you are you are, you are talking to the wrong person we all come from i assure you am i right on that but you see the the same power the bible says the body of jesus is lying down right there my goodness and that power right from hades he picked that body back to this realm if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead that that same spirit dwells in your mortal body that means the spirit is a lifter it doesn't keep people down when he finds anything and anyone that is down he must lift you someone is rising in the name of jesus someone is rising i prophesy to you you are rising you are rising and the world will see your business is rising the power that raised christ from the dead greater than any curse greater than any enchantment greater than every demonic orchestration in the name of jesus christ listen please don't just get entertained with what i'm saying what i'm telling you is truth from scripture after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up even if your situation is as heavy as the axe head it can still float back up again same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it one time if you know the song same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh hallelujah your love that rescued the earth lives in me apostle the doctor told me that somewhere blood is following the wrong channel in my body excellent welcome to a conference where the power of god comes to correct 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 mm. correct 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 that everything that has not been planted by my father 
following the wrong channel it must be corrected in one minute open your mouth and declare correct my life correct my business by your power someone is declaring in the name of Jesus correct supernaturally correct in the name of Jesus to the glory of the Father let there be a supernatural correction correct my organs correct my life correct my finances oh God by your power hallelujah hallelujah please be seated is God speaking to someone carry this revelation and you will not be scared of anomalies the moment you see things that are not right you are not scared the person who has the cleaner and the person who has the pencil who is greater the person who has the pencil can write everything that's why sometimes you allow children to write nonsense on important documents provided they are using a pencil they can go ahead and explore their creativity because in one moment you can wipe it away and it does not look like anything was written so sometimes when you see god majestically coming into your life you are like lord satan has been writing for too long it doesn't matter once he arrives how long did it take the power of sin to trap people but in one moment the blood of jesus came and with one single sweep it got it out of the way say amen what is the power of god number three is god helping someone yeah. i like this third description the power of god is his agency for enforcing compliance the power of god ah, yeah, 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 is his agency for enforcing compliance compliance as i just said compliance i just saw like fire this is what i just saw i just saw like fire this is what when God starts showing me things like that, it's not because that's when he started working, but he's only showing you because he's doing something in the life of someone. Hallelujah. His agency, write this down, for enforcing compliance. Follow carefully. I'm going to give you three scriptures and I want us to study them carefully. His agency for enforcing please underline enforcing compliance luke chapter 4 please from verse 31 watch this hmm. compliance immediately suggests that there is a possibility for rebellion am i right on that when you pass laws you put systems even within society when the senate or the house or whatever when they finally pass a law there are usually systems through agencies that are put together that becomes the eyes of the law am i right on that and their assignment is to insist that there must be compliance and came down to capernaum we're reading luke 4 31 uh-huh a city of galilee and taught them on the sabbath day jesus now the Bible says, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And the Bible says, and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. He was disrupting service, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. We are reading to 37. And Jesus rebuked them, saying, I love this, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Say compliance. The Bible says, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Other versions say, and they obey him. And the Bible says, the fame of him went out into every place 
of the country round about let me tell you the truth the zenith of power and authority is when you speak and there is obedience is one thing to speak genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 jesus god himself gives us his model of power the bible says and god said verse 3 there was darkness and chaos and all of that god said let there be light and your bible says there was am i right on that and the bible says god saw the light that it was good and it divided the light from darkness so when you make decrees and then there is rebellion to your decree it means your power is questionable am i right on that obedience to instructions obedience to decrees is how you know that power is available within a place am i right on that yes and my bible says and thou shalt decree a thing is it in your bible and it shall be established unto you in fact it says where the word of a king is it says there is power what kind of power power that compels compliance the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that satan is very stubborn just because scripture says it does not mean he will obey not without force it is written i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in israel satan does not care even to jesus he came and stubbornly came and was wasting his time and jesus said get thee satan he came to peter and tried to manipulate peter and jesus looked at him and said get behind me satan is that true compliance there are many believers who say things and it looks like devils and demons and situations and circumstances just tell us and say by what power for instance the sons of skiva what they said was right but the power that enforces compliance was not there we adjure you by jesus and he said jesus i know paul i know i always add my name joshua selman i know he says but who are thou From today you will speak and you will see it come to pass in the name of jesus in the name of jesus that you can look at situations and circumstances and say peace be still was that not what jesus said why are you so fearful oh you of little faith he said the bible says he got up wiped sleep from his eyes and spoke to the wind and to the waves and said shalom be still the bible says there was an instant calm and the disciples marveled and said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him obey him bringing everything to the obedience of christ do you believe what i'm telling you jesus sends the disciples two by two the bible records and they went and returned back rejoicing you know what their joy was they said we are shocked this thing that used to happen to you has started happening to us too that even the devils were subject to us in thy name and jesus laughed and said that that don't rejoice over that but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life but then that they rejoice there is nothing as powerful as the realm of the spirit being obedient to your word it enforces the fact that you are a king indeed and let me tell you when there is a track record of your speakings coming to pass in your life and that of others that is value that men will never even leave you alone they will pursue you to the cave they will pursue you to the mountains because they have learned that the word of god like samuel is upon your mouth and for samuel the bible says none of his word fell to the ground say power, power. Hmm. the centurion comes to jesus the equivalent of a captain in the army and he says please come my son is sick unto death and would you help me and he said no you are a, a noble man in the army i will respect you and come to your house and the centurion gives us a very strong lesson that jesus himself acknowledged the centurion said you do not need to come under my roof for i am a man under authority in other words when it comes to do with 
power and authority i understand i am under the authority of the government of rome and on account of that authority i say unto one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh do this and he does and i know that you are not alone you also came under the authority of heaven so speak the word only and jesus said i've not found this faith in other words who taught you this where did you learn this no not in israel he said Ah, the believer has such a phenomenal advantage ladies and gentlemen that i can stand from this pulpit and speak without going there the actual location because where the word of a king is there is power the president of this nation or any noble leader across the globe they can sit down and issue a statement sometimes you they don't even have to speak it is in writing provided they append their signature there it becomes law There are many things we have been telling situations and circumstances but they have not been able to come to a point of obedience because we have not realized that the power of god is and has the assignment of enforcing compliance satan get lost and he says who are you talking about me you know how old i've been here and then you say it's true it's true so what do we do about this now if you use your own authority as a believer you become cheated immediately but remember the bible says blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hallelujah so do not wonder when you see demons and infirmities and situations obey that you can look at someone with no job and say in the name of jesus i open the two leaf gates of lagos that that which belongs to you must find you and the person returns with a testimony it is called compliance i hope you know that creation has an ear my bible says let everything that hath an ear listen he that hath an ear let him hear and the prophet will speak and say o f hear ye the word of the lord you just see it as a an extended mass full of dust but in the realm of the spirit everything can hear it is one quality animate and inanimate things have biology and science will teach us from a scientific standpoint that they are living and non-living things and we respect them we'll keep it so but i can tell you from a spiritual standpoint there is no such thing as non-living the concept of non-living only exists within the frame of science everything can hear the word of the lord everything in fact everything can hear it just depends on who is speaking that means your situation as it's not only you that came to the church your situation is also listening to this sermon you are not the only one who is listening remember when the prophet was talking with the woman the jar of oil was hearing too i have nothing except and i'm sure the oil was saying but i've been here and the prophet said you think you are the only one i'm talking to you go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and watch another audience in your house that you're not even aware of the oil began to multiply everything can hear everything can hear barrenness can hear everything can hear retrogression can hear everything and when the lord speaks even by his power there must be compliance in the name of jesus christ number four very quickly has god helped someone already what is the power of god finally the power of god is his agency for bringing salvation his agency for bringing salvation i said i was going to give us three scriptures for enforcing compliance let me just give us the two remaining we will not read it but i'll just give it to us please write for reference matthew 8 24 to 27 matthew 8 24 to 27 and then psalm 66 verse 3 i'll take it again matthew 8 24 to 27 and psalm 66 and verse 3 now number four his agency for bringing salvation say salvation salvation, salvation here is not just limited to the new birth experience salvation is deliverance in its entirety are we together it comes from the greek word soteria 
it captures within it healing deliverance lifting breakthrough anything that sustains the ability of cutting to cut you away from that which stands as a resistance is called salvation acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let me request that we read together when we have it projected acts 4 33 ready one to read it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection uh-huh and great grace one more time and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all thank you god bless you please be seated the bible says with great power not with great stories with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection that means it took more than an intellectual discussion to prove the validity of his resurrection it was with great power great power great power romans 1 and verse 16 here's what it says romans 1 and verse 16 i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is the power not just that it has the power it is the power of god it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the jew first and to the greek what is the power of god the agency for bringing salvation salvation for the lost salvation for the downtrodden i sat quietly as i listened to our precious people testifying freedom liberty from depression and as they mentioned all those cases you know quite frankly i wasn't really focusing on all the story i just wanted to know what and what i would deal with from the stories they were saying <laughs> so i wanted to hear okay i hear depression i hear this i hear that because they must bow today today in the name of jesus christ salvation what does it mean to be saved to be rescued from danger what does it mean to be saved to be taken to a place of safety where you are far within the grip of danger and evil that is what salvation means first it starts with the lost but it does not just end with the lost even believers who are saved the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower am i right on that it says the righteous so they are already righteous but they can run to it and they are saved because there is still another kind of disaster the devil want to bring even upon the righteous in fact the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord by this power delivered him from them all from them all many are the afflictions of the righteous i've often said that it is not unusual for believers to have challenges it is defeat that is unusual it is not unusual for believers to have challenges many are the afflictions of the righteous but victory is what the word of god guarantees and the power of god is the principal sponsor for the believers victory hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you